Since he was mostly influenced by real-world events, Captain America has to distinguish himself from his other comic book counterparts. But how exactly did this sickly man become the peak of physical and mental human performance to help the United States win the war? And how did he find himself becoming the founding member of a league of superheroes? To see what made Steve Rogers the first Avenger, we'll have to dive into his origin a bit. As a young man who had witnessed the Nazi atrocities in Europe and the relentless attacks from the Japanese Empire, he sought out to join the army. But due to his frail body and anemic sickness, he was rejected from being drafted at every turn. But his tenacity had caught the eye of General Chester Phillips, who had offered him the chance to take part in a top-secret government program called Operation Rebirth. This was exclusively designed to produce super soldiers that could help the Allies win the war. And as such, Rogers volunteered as the first human test subject, but just when no one thought that the charismatic young boy wouldn't make it out alive, the fog lifted to reveal that Steve was in peak shape and by all accounts had superior strength, agility, flexibility, endurance, and speed. These abilities, when coupled with his patriotism and his unwavering support for humanity, made Captain America a war hero. Well, knowing all that, it's safe to say we can assess his weapons, armor, and abilities to see what makes him stand out in the company of metahumans and gods. To see just how powerful the serum made him, we need not look further than his enhanced physiology. Being around 6 feet and weighing 220 pounds would mean that he needs a pretty strong metabolic rate to drive his bodily functions. It is more than just adequate, however. It was strong enough that while he was frozen in the Siberian ice for over 60 years, his body had not only kept him alive, but also kept his physique intact so that when he was thawed out, it was as though he had not missed a beat. As far as weapons and armor go, he doesn't have much to go on in the contemporary world, but the fact that he had served as a commander in the war meant that he was given a whole host of tools and equipment to use. He was an expert marksman, and could easily wield anything from a pistol to a submachine gun to take down his German adversaries during a fight. He also had a motorcycle that came with its own set of guns, explosives, and gadgets. But the tool of the trade for Captain America was his iconic shield. Made out of vibranium, this shield was circular so that it could rebound perfectly off of any surface so that it would always return to him. It might be a very trivial detail here, but most people don't actually realize how heavy Cap's shield is. In the Falcon and Winter Soldier, we get a glimpse of Falcon training to use Cap's shield, and it took him nearly a week to get used to the weight of the shield around his arm. Not to mention the amount of time it would have taken him to hurl it at high speeds. That takes some serious strength, but Ron Rogers makes it look effortless. The shield was so powerful that in the first Avengers film, it could withstand a direct impact from Thor's Mjolnir and still keep it unscathed. But besides his near indestructible shield, he has nothing much else to go on to protect him from punches, bullets, and explosions. But lucky for him, the time it takes him to recover from action is also reduced, and the time it takes him to heal from injuries and falls is greatly reduced due to his enhanced endurance and regenerative abilities. After the elevator fight, he fell from nearly 30 stories to the ground, but still managed to get up. He can also run faster than an Olympic gold medalist, and in Captain America the First Avenger, he was fast enough to overtake a car and even keep up with a jet about to take off. We get an idea of how fast he is when we use Falcon as a benchmark. When doing laps around Washington Monument, Steve completes several rounds in the time it takes Falcon to complete just one. During Captain America's Civil War, he chased down Black Panther down a freeway and was fast enough to keep up with most cars. That means he can run around 80 kilometers an hour when he's not holding back. But his true power comes from his super strength that he uses to dispatch his foes with sometimes near lethal efficiency. He is so strong that just one of his blows is enough to kill a man, and so, sometimes he will hold back his true power. But when he does land a punch or a kick with intent, his adversaries go flying. One of his most impressive feats of strength was when he kept the helicopter from taking off by using himself as a latch to hold it against the helipad. 
Countering the lift of the helicopter must have caused him to exert some 4,000 pounds of force, which is enough to rip people's arms off. But even without the fighting prowess and the strength, but even without the fighting prowess and strength, Captain America has proven that he has the utmost regard for the sanctity of human life, and his dedication to that cause was the reason he joined the army, went on those insane suicide missions during the war, and risked his life for the people of New York and Serbia. His wholehearted devotion to protect and serve his people had made him worthy enough to wield Mjolnir. So that there is no question about it, at his core, the only superpower Steve Rogers ever had was his relentless pursuit of truth, and that's what makes him a hero. That's it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel.